Kirby Corningstone. And I'm Ron Burgundy. And this is the Channel 5 News Team, our top story tonight, the end of the Korean War after three years of fighting. In case you've forgotten, let's recap why this war started. During World War II, Korea had been controlled by Japan. After the war, Korea was split along the 38th parallel. The Soviets took the north and the U.S. took the south. The, re the original intent was for Korea to be reunited. However, with the beginning of the Cold War and with mounting tensions between America and the Soviet Union's opposing viewpoints on government, Korea stayed separated. In 1948, South Korea formed the Republic of Korea, electing a president. Conversely, North Korea implemented a communist government and called themselves the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. On June 25, 1950, North Korea launched an attack on South Korea marking the beginning of the Korean War. UN troops entered the side of South Korea on October 1st, and the U.S. involvement in the war began on October 7th, 1950. From October 1950 to May 1951, the fighting continued. As the U.S. helped South Korea push North Koreans back over the 38th parallel, China aided North Korea and forced North and South Korea into a stalemate. Both sides found that neither could win without nuclear force or additional countries entering the war. Not wanting to start World War III, they decided to negotiate. However, fighting continued due to political disagreements. It took another two years before the negotiations were complete. Yesterday, on July 27, 1953, the Korean Armistice Agreement was signed. North and South Korea went back to their pre-war relationship. While the two countries have ceased fighting, a peace treaty is yet to be made. With no hope of the unification of the peninsula in sight, hopefully these two nations can learn to live with each other. To summarize, after three years of fighting, North Korea and South Korea still remain separated at the 38th parallel. Let's look at a map displaying different points in the Korean War. At the start of the war, both countries were separated at the 38th parallel. North Korea then invaded South Korea, pushing them way back to the tip of the peninsula, leaving them little territory. The U.S. then joined in on the war and helped them gain back their territory. After a short period, the U.S. had helped South Korea gain its territory back over the 38th parallel and eventually up into the northern end of the peninsula, forcing North Korea to have little to territory at all. China then entered the war and pushed us and South Korea back below the 38th parallel. And then we kept pushing up and it, we inched forward ever so slightly, forcing us to be in a stalemate with China. This stalemate lasted from 1951 to 1952. In 1952, we then, this treaty started to appear and in 1953, the treaty eventually was signed, and both countries were then separated at the end of the war, back at the 38th parallel where it had been at the beginning. Whoa, that's a lot of change, Ron. It sure is, Veronica. But enough about Korea. Let's look at how this war is affecting us. In case you've been living under a rock, we're currently in a cold war with the Soviet Union. Basically, we're fighting them indirectly through, through other countries. Korea was one of our many pawns. The Korean War marks the first hot war of the Cold War. Ha <laughs> ha, that's pretty clever. Whoever thought of that must be raking in the dough. All right. In this battle, neither superpower was victorious. Although we didn't win, we survived the first conflict of the nuclear age relatively unscathed. Sadly, it is likely that China and America will no longer be on good terms as we have been in the past, for China has clearly indicated whose side they are really on. But the real tragedy, folks, here is the staggering death tolls for such a short conflict. South Korea lost an estimated 138,000 and 450,000 were wounded. An additional 33,000 POWs remain unaccounted for. North Korea lost 215,000 303,000 were wounded and 120,000 POWs are still unaccounted for. China lost 114,000 men, 380,000 were wounded, and had 21 POWs, 21,000 POWs. The most tragic loss are those of our own men. In total, the U.S. lost about 37,000 men and had 92,134 wounded. 
15,000 American soldiers are still unaccounted for. On a more positive note, we'd like to remind you that the Wicked Witch of the East is dead. That's right. Um, with the result of jo Joseph Stalin's death, the Soviets are in a state of transition, and so for the time being, we can expect that conflicts will be minimal. During de this downtime, the U.S. government officials hope to work with European nations to ensure that the division of Germany doesn't lead to another Korean War. Clearly, President Truman is against all communist nations, not just the Soviet Union. You may see our country take part in many more anti-communist conflicts to come. Up next, learn how to identify communists and what you can do to prevent one.